if you know anyone who knows anyone who knows Chris Brown and Rihanna, um, can you please put me in touch because I have a bone to pick with them. What what's the bone? Okay, I'll answer. Why why do I have qualms with them? You see, I attended a concert that they did in 2006 in Sydney, and I had a good time. They sang a lot of songs songs that I enjoyed. I had fun. It was a thrill. But then the next day, it was like I'd never gone. I didn't feel the thrill anymore. There was no more excitement, no more buzz. The music wasn't even still ringing in my head. And I really don't understand. That's, I mean, that's just not fair. I mean, I thought that would provide me lasting happiness. Why can't I just feel that good all the time? Okay, welcome, firstly, before we unpack that, back to the With Joe Eby podcast. We've been going through our series on how we're wired and meaning fundamentals. So go back to the start of the podcast if you've only just joined us because we refer to a lot of concepts we've talked about already. So to give it context, you might want to brush up. Now, you're thinking, you're an idiot, Joe. The concert's not going to make you happy forever. You would have to keep going to concerts. Does that mean we have to do that for everything? Do we have to keep hmm, having relations with people? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Keep going to concerts, keep drinking, keep buying things. Do we have to do them all, all the time? Because if each time we buy them, consume them or have them, each time we go to a concert, buy a car or whatever, have relations, that's sex for those who can't unpack subtlety. Does that mean we have to keep doing them? But you've probably found, as I have, that if you do nothing but go out a hundred nights in a row or have relations nonstop or take drugs nonstop, not something I've had experience with, that they start to get a little bit less enjoyable as you go. Have you noticed that? It's almost like you have to wait a bit in between concerts, in between nights out, because the cost you start to pay is high, I guess. Wow. Is it maybe that, is it maybe that we're homeostatic? Is that what it is? Well, that's a big word. It's a big fancy science word. What does that mean? Okay, maybe that means we return to baseline. Maybe it's like the tightrope, like when you wave the tightrope, but it, get, it kind of eventually is just going to get pulled out again so it comes back to the same level. Maybe that's how it is. So that's complicated. Well, I guess that's true, though. People are homeostatic. We do return to baseline. but not for everything. I guess the question is, how do we make the baseline better? Ah, now we're asking the right question. How do we make the baseline like 7 out of 10 or 8 out of 10 or specifically 8.5 out of 10, which that's significant for reasons we'll get to later if you're patient and you keep listening. Hmm, how would we do that? How many rock concerts? How many cars? How many boyfriends and girlfriends and flings? How many of those things, what combination of them will raise the baseline? Ah, hang on, problem. Those things don't move the tightrope up. Those things only give us the spikes and the drops. Almost makes you think. Solution's not there. 
that something else might be given us. A higher baseline, a higher homeostasis, a higher equilibrium that we always come back to. There's some of Newton's laws in this stuff, I'm sure, but let's stay away from science for now. But we will get a little bit biological. So let's remember our last episodes were on Astro the dog. Important dog to know about. If you haven't been paying attention, it's the dog that runs 90% of your brain. We talked about how he's been shaped by evolution, right? He's been built for a time when we lived in tribes, very, you know, agrarian, basic, out in the jungle, hunter-gatherer kind of lifestyles. That he doesn't evolve as fast and update as fast. But we've got our conscious forebrain, right? Uh, neocortex, rather. It's a little bit more switched on, and that's... That's the part we identify most as us. And Astro has been shaped by evolution to do one thing. Make sure you survive. If you look at the other animals, they don't need to make their life meaningful. They don't go to rock concerts. They don't buy sports cars. Uh, they don't do all those things. They boost their odds of reproducing. They're all part of this game called natural selection. And the most of the people who are playing natural selection are not very autonomous. They're not very aware that the game exists. They're just players in the game. You know? Little, little figure, figureheads. They're not the character in the journey if you're playing a video game. They're all the other side characters. There's a, I think it's an NPC. There's a term for that. Anyway. I'm not even using gaming much here, but hmm, they're not aware of the game. Their existence is peaceful, as Anthony DeMello would say. They just be, they're authentic, they are themselves. They shouldn't actually be looked down on by us humans. We should actually be jealous of the animals. Because it's just authentic. They don't have to worry about meaning, fulfillment. Now, they have this pleasure-seeking tendency that we have that are referred to in this rock concert. And that pleasure is basically the game's reward, like coins or going up a level. That's the game's reward for getting it to survive. That's the natural selection game. Natural selection cares only about making your genes succeed, not about making you feel good. Astro the dog only cares about making your genes succeed, not making you feel good. So that is a little precursor, prelude, if you will, to a topic we're going to talk about again in the next episode called The Pleasure Treadmill. We're going to unpack what pleasure really is and what fulfillment really is. We're going to go to the blog post and we're going to deep dive into this further. But for now, I think you've had enough for one day. So, wow. If you want to get a jump, the blog's there. It's called The Pleasure Treadmill, www.withjoeweeby.com. And then find the article on The Pleasure Treadmill or just Google it, whatever. Um, anything else? Oh, can't forget. Remember to use this to open doors for yourself in terms of what you know, doors to new rooms of knowledge, but also for others. Don't forget that the best way to open a thousand doors for you is to concentrate on opening doors for others. This has been the With Joe Weeby podcast, and I'll speak to you again tomorrow. <laughs>